In this video, we're going to explain how to hardwire a passive infrared burglar alarm motion sensor. Okay, so we're taking a look at a passive infrared motion detector. It's from a company called DSC, which is based in Canada. And this is what it looks like when it comes out of the box. It's made of three different parts. We're going to go ahead and open it up. So this is what it looks like when it's opened up. Uh, this is the front part. And this is where a little LED, a status LED, will blink based on detection of motion in a room. And this is the lens, this clear opaque lens. That's what it looks like on the inside. And then here's the internal circuit board with the uh, passive infrared sensor itself. And I don't know if you can pick this up in the video, but this particular motion sensor, uh, let me mention, there are a lot of different passive infrared motion sensors manufactured by a lot of different manufacturers and they all work off the same premise and that's detecting infrared energy and they're passive but they'll have different features so just because I'm pointing out a feature with this model doesn't mean they're all the same they're similar but in this particular model we've got four screw terminals two on the right two on the left and this pair here is for power because the motion detector requires power it's 12 volts DC so you've got your positive and your ground and then over here is your contact sensor in other words when the motion sensor is detecting motion it will um, trip this contact here and it will report it back to the panel which is at a central location now as I mentioned in the earlier part of the video we're going to show you how to install the motion sensor and <clears throat> motion sensors are wired different different ways and different methodologies uh, sometimes when a home is wired uh, just the wire here will stick out of the wall now this is a 22 gauge four conductor wire and it's a solid it comes in solid or stranded uh, in this particular case I happen to like a solid and in other cases if a house is under construction or there's room renovation an electrical back box will be installed like this. This is a single gang electrical back box and then the wire is just stuffed inside here and uh, you're probably familiar with this back box because this is actually used for high voltage electrical but you can use it for low voltage. And then the sheetrock is you know placed around it and then it's cut out. But as you can tell when you have this opening in the wall the motion sensor doesn't cover it and that's not attractive and that's not a good installation so what we're going to do is we're going to take a regular faceplate which I've already begun to do the work on which happens to be a blank faceplate now this is a flexible plastic as you can see I'm flexing it as opposed to a hard plastic where a hard plastic is very rigid I recommend the flexible plastic because it's easier to drill and work with the hard rigid plastic will crack and break if you're trying to drill it so this plate as you can see would fit right over the box and then we're going to attach the motion sensor to this plate and I've drilled three custom holes here uh, two of them are uh, mounting screw holes so that the motion sensor sits tight against this plate and the third one is for the wire the wire will come through alright so what we've done here is we went ahead and we attached the back portion of the motion sensor to the faceplate with the custom drilled holes that I put in here and I went ahead and I pulled the 22 gauge 4 conductor burglar alarm wire through and I stripped it a little bit so on the left is the uh, black conductor which we're going to use as the ground we're going to tie that down to the ground terminal the red conductor is going to be the 12 volt DC conductor we're going to tie that down to there and then the green and the yellow in this particular brand of wire is going to be used as the signal circuit the contact circuit and that's going to get tied down over here now I mentioned earlier in the video that every passive infrared motion detector from each manufacturer functions a little bit differently and depending on who you talk to they may have 
varying opinions regarding resistors. Now, one option is to place a resistor that's supplied by the burglar alarm manufacturer here in line with the contact signal circuit. Some professional installers will tell you that uh, for one reason or another they place it at a different location on the line going back to the alarm panel. That's going to be outside the scope of this particular video. Now let's move on to some other parts of this particular motion sensor. There are two jumpers. You probably can't depict, depict them in the video but one is here and the other is here. One of the jumpers is designed to activate the pet immunity of this particular brand and model motion sensor. And what pet immunity means is that the sensor has the ability in its circuitry to distinguish from a small animal like a cat or a dog as opposed to a human being. And they do that, well, I'm not going to go into how they do it, but that's how they do it. So one of those jumper settings will have you turn that pet immunity feature on or off. And the other is I mentioned the LED in the face which happens to be right there. You can turn that LED on and off and when that LED is activated, when it detects motion, whether it's in a, a you know, real world situation when the alarm is armed or when it's in a walk test mode, the LED will flash on the board. The LED is right here and by disabling the other jumper it will turn that LED off. That's a matter of preference or it's a matter of you know how you want to set up the security in your particular situation. Another feature on here, this screw adjusts the, uh, the distance and the angle in which the motion sensor will uh, detect motion. So once this motion detector is installed, it's important to do a walk test and you probably want to keep this screw kind of loose so that you can slide the board up and slide it down to make sure your detection is optimal for your particular situation. Now this motion sensor, passive infrared, does have an, opera an optimal operating temperature range which generally is from about 30 degrees Fahrenheit to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. So it needs to remain indoor in a climate controlled environment. If you would try to install this outdoor, you're going to run into a repeated false alarm problem.